Good morning, class. Today is the start of the second unit of the course, and we begin with a few definitions. The first is for an imaginary number. This number results when we take the square root of a negative number. For example, if you have the square root of negative 169, this can be written as the product of the square root of 169 and the square root of negative 1. The square root of 169 is the number 13. So we have 13 times the square root of negative 1. And here we define the J operator to equal the square root of negative 1. So this becomes 13J. So the square root of negative 169 is written 13J and that's considered to be an imaginary number. When we have combinations of both real and imaginary numbers, these numbers are called complex. And we can see that combination very clearly when we write the rectangular form of a complex number. In the rectangular form, we have the sum of x and yj. Here x is a real number and y times j is an imaginary number. So again, this is what's known as rectangular form. There's a second form of every complex number called its polar form and that's when you write the uh, quantity in this way. And we'll focus on this in our next lesson. But for today's lesson, I want to look at performing operations with complex numbers in rectangular form. And when we talk about operations in mathematics, here we mean adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna start with addition. This is the simplest operation to perform. So here we have two complex numbers in rectangular form and we are adding them. So when we add these numbers, all we have to do is collect like terms. So what I mean here is we have a real number of two here and a real number of negative five here. So we start by adding those two real numbers together. So it's two added to negative five and that's gonna give us negative three. And in a similar fashion, we now add the imaginary parts together. So here we have an imaginary number negative five J and here the imaginary number is positive two J. So we simply add a negative 5j and a positive 2j to obtain a negative 3j. So our answer is negative 3 plus negative 3j. And normally we just write that in this way, negative 3 minus 3j. And that's it, that's how you add. So you simply collect like terms. Now, um, when it comes to subtraction, we might want to first change to addition. So how would we do that? When you're changing the operation to addition, you do not change the first complex number. You simply change the operation here. And in doing so, you have to multiply this second number by negative one. So six minus J becomes negative six plus J. Okay, so that's how you change from subtraction to addition. And now you simply collect like terms as we did in the previous example. So first start with the real numbers. So we have a negative three and a negative six. If we add those, we get negative nine. And now consider the imaginary parts. Here we have positive two J and we're adding J. In other words, we're adding one more J. So this will give us 
positive 3j. So our answer is negative 9 plus 3j. Okay, so those operations are not too bad. The next one we're going to look at is multiplication. In order to handle multiplication, we need to know what j squared will equal. So remember, j is the square root of negative 1. That means j squared is j times j. Okay, so if you want, we can write that here. Since j squared would mean j times j, it is also the square root of negative 1 multiplied by the square root of negative 1. And that is simply negative 1. Okay, so we need to know that j squared is negative 1 when performing the multiplication. So, how do we multiply two binomials? Well, we even reviewed this in our last uh, unit when we looked at um, some of the Boolean expressions. When you multiply two binomials, you will have four terms given by first, outside, inside, last. So we do that here too. So the first term is five times eight or 40. On the outside, we have five multiplied by two J. And on the inside, we have negative J multiplied by eight. And then the last term is negative J multiplied by two J. So this is negative two J squared, just like that. Okay, so now here's where this is important. J squared is negative one. So this now means negative two multiplied by negative one. Negative two multiplied by negative one. So that becomes positive two. You'll see now then we have two real parts and two imaginary parts. So we simply collect like terms. So for the real part, we have 40 and positive two. And for the imaginary part, we have 10j and negative 8j. So this would be our answer, 42 plus 2j. Okay, let's do a second example of multiplication because it is a little more involved than adding or subtracting. So here we go. Let's go ahead and perform the multiplication here as well. So first is two times six or 12. On the outside, we'll multiply two by negative three J. On the inside, we'll multiply negative 4j by positive 6. And the last term will be the multiplication of negative 4j and negative 3j. So that will be positive 12j squared. In our next step, we change j squared to negative 1. So this last term is 12 times negative 1 which means it's the real number, negative 12. And finally, we collect like terms. The real number is 12 minus 12, or zero. And you can write the zero there in the front if you like. The imaginary number is negative 6j minus 24j, so simply negative 30j. So here we end up with a purely imaginative answer. It's negative 30j. Again, if you like having the real number zero in the front, you certainly can do that. Okay, the final operation um, that I will look at with you is division. Uh, this one is so involved that we need a rule. So uh, the rule is what we're going to do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. What is the complex conjugate? It is formed by changing the sign in front of the imaginary part. Okay, so let me show you here what we mean. So multiply 
both the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So we need the complex conjugate of negative three plus two j. And that is simply negative three minus two j. So all we do is we take the sign in front of the imaginary part. So that's the plus sign here in front of two j and we change it. Okay, so that's the only thing that changed in forming the complex conjugate. And the reason we're allowed to do this, of course, is we now have a fraction where the numerator equals the denominator. So overall, this fraction is equal to one. So we are not changing the value of the original quotient. Okay, you'll see why we've done this in a moment. So what we do next, I'm gonna make a line for myself to try to keep things somewhat straight. What we do next is we perform the multiplication in the numerator and the multiplication in the denominator. Okay, so four terms. In the numerator, we'll have negative 15. On the outside, negative 10j. On the inside, positive 18j. And the last term will be positive 12j squared. Okay, and we do the same thing now in the denominator. So the first term is positive nine. On the outside, positive 6j. On the inside, negative 6j. And the last term will be negative four times j squared. Okay, so take a look at the denominator for a moment. Look at here, these middle two terms, they are equal in magnitude and opposite in their sign. So they actually eliminate each other. So what we're going to have is a denominator that's um, a real number only. The imaginary parts have canceled. And this is why we use the rule here. When you use the rule, you will always get a denominator that is a real number, and therefore you can perform the division. Okay, so let's go ahead. The next step, of course, would be to um, insert a factor of negative one in each of these last terms. So in the numerator now, again, let me start by making a line. So in the numerator now, at the um, end there, I'm gonna have negative 12. Because this is 12 times negative one. And then in the denominator, I'm gonna have nine plus four. And again, that's because this last term is negative four times negative one. And so in the denominator, we now have the number 13. And what about the numerator? Collecting like terms, so here are the two real numbers. We're gonna get negative 27. And as for the imaginary number, we're gonna have positive 8j. All right, so we're very, very close now. In fact, um, this form isn't too terrible, but what I want you to do here instead is to split this now into two terms, each with a denominator of 13. So we're gonna have negative 27 over 13 plus eight over 13 times j like this so we can clearly see the real number part um, and compare it with the imaginary part sorry about that just hung up on whoever that was <laughs> okay um, 
Yes, so here would be like the value of x, and here would be the value of y, you see, if we were to compare it to our x plus yj form. So please go ahead and do that. And by the way, if these fractions could be reduced, you would do that here now as well. So you would put your, your fractions here in uh, lowest terms. Um, and sometimes you might be asked to actually write your answers as decimals here, and you'd have to be told how to do the rounding. So if I said round to three significant digits, so why don't we do that here as well? You would just do, you know, negative 27 divided by 13 is this number. So I'd write down negative 2.08. That would be three significant digits plus, and now I would do eight divided by 13 as well. Okay, that number there. So 0 0.615. That is also three significant digits because the leading zero is not significant. Okay, so if you were, you will have to read um, the instructions for example, when you do um, a quiz or a test, read the instructions. You might be asked to um, leave it as a fraction, a fully, fully reduced fractions, or you might be asked to express as a decimal, in which case you'll also be given instructions about the rounding. And pay attention to the difference between significant digits um, or the number of decimal places. You see, this would have two decimal places, this has three decimal places, but the way that I've um, written this here would be as if we were asked to round to three significant digits. Okay, so that's an explanation of the rounding. Okay, let's try one more division problem. So again, how do we begin? We begin by multiplying here, both the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So what is the complex conjugate of three minus j? It is three plus j. All you do is take the complex number in the denominator and change the one sign only in front of the imaginary part. Okay, now let's go ahead and carry out the calculations. In the numerator, we start with 18 times three. Then on the outside, we will have positive 18j. And on the inside, positive 3j. The last term is simply j times j or positive j squared. In the denominator, three times three, then three times j, then negative j times three, and finally negative j times j, so negative j squared, like that. Okay, so that's just using um, first, outside, inside, last in both the numerator and the denominator. Next, we use the fact that j squared is equal to negative one. So this is negative one. And here, we are inserting negative one. So it's like taking negative one and multiplying it by a factor of negative one here. So, in the numerator, we'll have 54 plus 18j plus 3j plus a negative 1, which normally we write minus 1, okay? It's plus negative 1. And in the denominator, take a look. Of course, the imaginary part will be eliminated. And we'll simply have nine, and this becomes plus one. So negative one is subtracted, and that's the same as adding one. 
So our denominator is 10. And in the numerator, what do we have? We have 54 minus one, which is 53. And as for the imaginary part, we have positive 21j, just like this. Okay, and we would split that so that we can clearly compare the real part and the imaginary part. Okay, just like that. And here, actually, when we are dividing by 10, these are exact answers. So equals 5.3 plus 2.1j. And here, when I rounded, I used this notation. I just do that when my number is now uh, approximate. So in other words, my number has now been rounded. I do the squiggly equal sign. Um, and here it's an actual equal sign because I've not done any rounding. So that's just an explanation. You don't have to worry. I don't expect you to use a different uh, symbol when you do your rounding. Okay, so that's it for this first lesson. In the next one, I will focus on uh, the relationship between rectangular and polar form. And also, I uh, will look at performing multiplication and division in polar form. All right, thanks a lot. Have a great day.